a student's teacher meets with his parents and scolds him for being tardy to class. But the following day, instead of the youngster showing up to school, his grandma shows up and says he's sick. Unconvinced by this explanation, the teacher decides to surprise the youngster with a visit, only to discover that his situation is much worse than he had anticipated. Mr. Morgan had never taught at this particular school before. He had been punctual, gone over his lesson outline, and everything appeared to be going according to plan. Mr. Morgan, a young and inexperienced educator, was keen to make a name for himself by being a firm but fair instructor. Despite his serious demeanor, he hoped his students would view him as a cool mentor. As soon as seventh grader Mr. Morgan walked into the classroom and set his register on the desk, all the talking stopped. When he presented himself as their new history instructor, the students hurriedly returned to their seats, and a palpable air of anticipation pervaded the room. As the door to the classroom creaked open, Mr. Morgan commenced his lecture on the Great Depression and World War II. When everyone looked up to see who had interrupted their class, the pupils went silent, without making eye contact with the instructor or without a word. A young man entered the classroom and sat down. Good morning. Young man, Mr. Morgan stated with a touch of seriousness. You're going to be twenty minutes late to class and the time is fifteen past nine. Is there a solid rationale behind this? The youngster said nothing. Could you please stand up and introduce yourself? A request was made by Mr. Morgan. My name is Archie, the youngster said, raising his eyes from their squints. He seemed sleep-deprived and untidy, as if he'd been up all night. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, Archie. You have a new history instructor in me. Class starts in a few minutes. Please tell me why you showed up here without a prior justification. In my classroom. I will not stand for such conduct. After a little pause, Archie spoke again. I apologize, sir. Yes, I slept in too late. My apologies for the tardiness. It won't happen again, I was just really tired. The entire class couldn't help but giggle when Archie ended. His yawn visible through his speech. Silence. Come here, Mr. Morgan said. You are not allowed to be tardy to a class of this nature, Archie. May I view your assignments? It was said that your former history instructor would assign homework every weekend. Bring it here. Seeing Archie's journal, Mr. Morgan's face hardened. Archie timidly confessed. I didn't do it, sir, withholding any further explanation. Eventually, Mr. Morgan's tolerance ran out. And he lost it. Asking Archie. What is this? The youngster was publicly reprimanded by him for failing to complete any of his assignments for the entire semester. Such conduct has no place in my classroom. And I will not stand for it. I would like to speak with your parents first thing tomorrow. Do you understand? A flood of humiliation and regret washed over Archie. He could make out the sound of his fellow students making fun of him behind his back. But Archie's absence from class the next day worried Mr. Morgan. Hopefully. I didn't put him off. I simply wanted to be of service to him. Mr. Morgan whispered to himself as he gathered his possessions and got ready to depart. He looked over and saw a woman waiting outside the classroom, she looked to be in her eighties. Excuse me. Are you looking for someone? Asked Mr. Morgan. I'm Willow Parker. Archie's grandmother. Mrs. Parker. It is a pleasure to meet you. Today, Archie skipped school. Does he seem to be okay? Absolutely not. I advised my ill grandson not to go out this morning. You stated your desire to meet Archie's parents. How would you like us to proceed? Oh no. My darling just couldn't attend. There was strain in the woman's speech. And Mr. Morgan could feel it. I wish Archie a speedy recovery. Well, I simply wanted to make sure that Archie receives the support he requires to maintain his academic performance. Throughout the semester, 
he has failed to complete any assignments. And his tardiness to class is a regular occurrence. Unconvinced. Archie's grandma shot back. Did you look over everyone else's homework and projects? Have you scheduled meetings with each parent? If it's all right with you. I will inform Archie's mom that she is sick and will be visiting soon. Your compassion is appreciated. But there's no need to worry. Mr. Morgan, we're here to assist him. An increasing sense of annoyance washed over Mr. Morgan. Ultimately. I don't see it helping him. I must see his mother without delay. The woman moaned. But she stopped arguing after that. They unexpectedly crossed paths with Mr. Smith. The principal. When Mr. Morgan walked her out of the corridor. Mrs. Parker. Good afternoon. Is something wrong? Noticing the expression of anguish on her face. The principal inquired. After giving Archie an explanation. Archie's grandma departed. Mr. Morgan. Can you please come to my office? The head of the school asked. Mr. Morgan. Who hoped to find information that could aid Archie. Nodded and followed. Mr. Morgan. Archie's a wonderful boy. And I feel very sorry for what he's been through, he said. His mother has been coping with major challenges after his father's death in a motorbike accident a few years ago. Let's not get into all the trouble she's been in. The faculty has decided to expel Archie next month. So I'll cut to the chase. Mr. Morgan was taken aback by what he heard. What? Kick that kid out. Excuse me. Mr. Smith. But I cannot understand. I get that Archie's life has been tough. And maybe he's struggling with something we don't know about just yet. His performance has been declining. But we must not give up on him. We must lend him a hand. I get that. Mr. Morgan, the principal said. Everyone here feels terrible for Archie. And we wish him the best no matter what he's going through right now. But we also have a duty to our other pupils. We have a responsibility to uphold the academic standards that have made our institution famous. But Mr. Smith. If we kick him out. Where will he go? For Archie. This school represents his sole opportunity for a brighter future. He is in need of our assistance. Particularly at this difficult time. We must not abandon him. What if he ends up at a school for kids from low-income families? He could take a dark turn and become involved with crime and narcotics. That is more inhumane. Archie is in need of our assistance. And I have faith he will excel given the right direction, Mr. Morgan said. According to Mr. Morgan, Archie had been given numerous chances. But he still hadn't improved. He's setting a poor example for our students and hurting our average academic performance statistics, argued Mr. Smith. After losing, Mr. Morgan felt sorry for Archie. Despite his pleading, the principal did not rethink the decision. Mr. Morgan, I know you're worried. But this is how our school works. And you'll have to adjust. Mr. Smith made it clear that they would no longer tolerate his bad behavior and lackluster results. Please give your evaluation of Archie within one month so that I can expel him officially and with the necessary paperwork. My guess is that you won't have to invent anything. Archie's poor performance this semester should make it easier, Mr. Smith quipped with a laugh. Mr. Morgan was discouraged when he departed from the office. Without knowing how to assist, Archie's future seemed bleak. He went to see Archie that night so he could talk to his mom about the upcoming expulsion. He finally got someone to answer the door after he banged on it repeatedly without success. The strong odor of old liquor hit Mr. Morgan as he entered. The sight surprised him. And he froze when he yelled out in alarm, empty whiskey bottles were lying all over the floor. A voice suddenly interrupted him from behind before he had a chance to take everything in. Upon seeing the instructor in the living room, Archie's grandma appeared taken aback. Refreshing to reconnect with you. Mrs. Parker. Two small children. About four or six years old. Burst into the room. 
interrupting Mr. Morgan, who had hoped to talk with Archie's mother. Adding, are they your grandchildren too, he inquired. So, what exactly are you looking for? Just wanted to let you know that my daughter will be in touch as soon as she is able. Currently. She is not at home, Mrs. Parker responded. Excuse me for interrupting. Mrs. Parker, Mr. Morgan said with an artificial grin. I figured I'd drop by and see how Archie was doing. Is he somewhere? Is he visible to me? He is not at home, the woman muttered. He ventured out to procure a dose of medication. Your grandson is sick and you send him out alone to get medicine? Mr. Morgan inquired. A large boy, Archie is. His self-care skills are commendable. Apart from that, I am quite busy. If it's okay with you. I need to get the house in order, she said. Mr. Morgan promptly left the house after realizing that bringing up Archie's predicament with his grandma would be fruitless. On his way to the gate, he ran across Archie, who appeared disheveled and worn out. The young man smelled like tobacco and wore dirty clothes that looked like labor clothes. When he attempted to run away from his teacher, Mr. Morgan pursued him and stopped him. Fear and humiliation widened Archie's eyes as he gazed up. I am okay. Mr. Morgan. I beg you. Leave this place forever. I need to wash up and I'm exhausted, Archie remarked. Are you looking exhausted? Have you been somewhere? Your grandma informed me that you were sick. And you stayed home from school today. What's happening? I can lend you a hand. You know. I beg you. Trust me, Mr. Morgan said. Without uttering a word. Archie demanded that Mr. Morgan depart immediately. But the educator was hell-bent on getting to the bottom of things. So she pushed Archie to be honest. The principal has chosen to expel you from school. Listen, Archie. Do you think I'll allow that to occur? However, you must inform me about the issue. You have my word that I will not report you to the principal or scold you. All I want to do is lend you a hand. Mr. Morgan explained. Thank you for trying. Mr. Morgan, but I really doubt you will be able to assist me. I must address my personal issues, Archie started. Following my father's passing, my mother took out loans from unscrupulous individuals. Overworked at the illicit cigarette factory. She began arriving home late and frequently experiencing severe nausea. When I first saw her using a needle, I knew she had started drinking. She found solace in it alone. Now that I'm an adult, the thought of some stranger storming into our home and scolding my mom for failing to repay the money gives me the willies. As a result, Archie began working part-time at the tobacco factory after school every day in order to contribute towards paying off the bills. Mr. Morgan felt a wave of sympathy wash over him. Hey. I get that. Archie. But you shouldn't have to work in that dangerous and unlawful atmosphere at such a young age. Damage to your health can result. In your opinion, isn't that a poor choice? He inquired. In response. Archie asked. Wouldn't you do the same for your mother? However. You cannot risk your future in this way, Mr. Morgan contended. There's a more suitable and promising role for you. You have filthy. Rough hands, just look at them. Books and stationery. Not a cigarette. Are what you should be grasping. Champ, hear me out, if you return to school tomorrow. We can find out a way to assist your mom. All right, what does it matter? Mr. Morgan? Despite our current difficulties. I have faith that we will eventually triumph over this trial. Meanwhile. Did you hear? If you give me a poor grade. I'll be kicked out. That's fine with me. Studying is not my strong suit. I feel like I'm failing this class. Going to school every day won't make a difference, Archie remarked. Archie, I don't think this will fix your difficulties. You should look for an exit strategy. 
You can't just give up, education is necessary for every child, Mr. Morgan adamantly stated. But just when Mr. Morgan was about to conclude, the youngster withdrew his hands and started to leave. Mr. Morgan. It's okay. Not a problem. I appreciate having someone who thinks about us. But I need to go make supper for my brothers right now. We can't bear this horrible broth that Granny cooks daily. Archie was halted in his tracks as Mr. Morgan swiftly moved in front of him. Archie. Please wait. Please try out my suggestion, I have an idea. Why don't we strike a deal? How about we switch places every day? So that you can get a head start on your homework. I will prepare dinner for your family. Simply return to your academic pursuits. You are most than welcome to continue working part-time at the factory after school. I'll make dinner and you can study in the evening. We can arrange to meet at the same time daily and alternate duties. I realize it seems strange. But why not see if it works? What do you think? Archie gave it some thinking and came to a conclusion. Mr. Morgan's visits increased in frequency over time. After Archie got home from his part-time job in the factory, he would prepare supper for the whole family while Archie prepared for his exams and completed his homework. Mr. Morgan and Archie were quite close, and the youngster loved spending time with his instructor. Mr. Morgan would go to extraordinary lengths to ensure that Archie stayed in school and kept him from being expelled, including occasionally taking his position at the factory. The test results arrived a month later. Answering Mr. Morgan's wishes, the principal was forced to reevaluate expulsion of Archie due to his substantial improvement in academics. Mr. Morgan, I am much obliged. As the youngster embraced his teacher, he expressed his gratitude for all of her support and believed in him. It was you, Archie, who did this on your own. Thanks to your efforts. It's all paid off, Mr. Morgan exclaimed with satisfaction. They were enjoying a hearty lunch when someone started pounding on the door. The joy that Archie was experiencing was cut short. Hello. We're from Child Protective Services, a social worker said. May we come in and meet your guardian? Social workers arrived at the home to evaluate the living circumstances of the children just as Archie's thoughts began to run. They were so sure that things weren't good that they went up to the kids and tried to abduct them. I'm sorry. But based on what we've seen today and the information we've received, we have to take you and your brothers into custody until we find a better foster home for you, the employee added. No. I heard Archie yell. This is too much for you. Our humble abode. We will remain here. Workers from CPS were unwavering when they led Archie and his brothers to the exit. Disregarding his cries and struggles, the youngster struggled to free himself while he clung tenaciously to the leg of the social worker. He pleaded with Mr. Morgan. Please don't take us away from our home, while Granny stepped in to urge him not to. As the social workers crammed Archie and his siblings into a cruiser, they ignored his cries for help. What is your motivation behind this? How did our actions merit this? When they arrived at the shelter, little Archie still wouldn't get out of the car. He clenched his jaw and declared, I'm not going anywhere. His resolve was obvious. Somewhere, with my mom and grandparents, is where I belong. That place is in my house. Archie and his siblings were dragged from the cruiser and into the strange shelter by the social workers, who overcame their resistance. It was a really disheartening and hopeless experience for Archie. His mother's phone was unanswered every time he attempted to contact her. The number that belonged to Mr. Morgan was also inaccessible. As a result of his anger toward the principal, Archie felt as though he had lost everything in an instant. Under his breath, he murmured, You did this to me, accusing the principal of causing him emotional distress. I could always tell he had it in for me. He first tried to have me removed from school. And when that failed, he found other ways to make my life unbearable. I despise you, Mr. Smith, because of what you've done to my brothers and myself. 
I simply despise you. Archie walked through the doors of his old school fifteen years after that tragic day. And a flood of memories flooded his thoughts. While he was here, he had felt both happiness and sadness. He felt a mix of exhilaration and nostalgia since. Despite the changes, everything still seemed familiar. Out of nowhere, Archie was prompted to stomp over to the principal's office by the sound of a familiar voice resonating over the intercom. He was ecstatic to learn that Mr. Morgan, his previous history teacher, was actually the principal. Archie said, Excuse me, sir, his voice betraying the range of feelings he was experiencing. Mr. Morgan, grinning broadly, cut Archie off before he could complete his thought. Are you the new English teacher? With an open arm, Mr. Morgan welcomed Archie. I implore you, enter. I heard that the middle school English department is getting a new teacher today while I was on a field trip. My name is Lewis Morgan. Pleased to meet you. Standing there. For a while he was stunned. But looking into the eyes of his former teacher, Archie put on his finest smile. The familiarity and generosity he had experienced so long ago returned to him. As if nothing had changed, even if it had. Hello, Mr. Morgan. My name is Archie. Will my name ring a bell? The one that brought a constant odor of tobacco to class. Sold clothes. And never turned in his assignments? At long last. He articulated his thoughts. A look of acknowledgement crossed Mr. Morgan's face. Jesus Christ. My God. Are you Archie? Meeting you. My son. Brings me immense joy. How tall you are now, it's unbelievable. We're talking fifteen years here. I'm overjoyed that you can still recall my name. A peculiar sadness washed over Mr. Morgan when he embraced Archie. He casually mentioned. It was me, Archie, while they were still talking. That day. I contacted CPS. I merely wished for a brighter future for you children. I apologize for keeping this from you. Maybe one day you'll be able to forgive me. I sensed that something wasn't right. Mr. Morgan. I first suspected Mr. Smith. But then I realized that couldn't be the case. He was merely irritated by my academic performance, he actually rejoiced when my grades went up. Archie said with a laugh. You are the reason I am here today. Mr. Morgan, without you. None of this would have been possible. Thanks to you. I now know my full potential. At a time when I felt like no one else believed in me. You did. You stayed by my side although everyone else attempted to release their grip. I appreciate it. Mr. Morgan, with his eyes sparkling with emotion. Mr. Morgan hesitated. He whispered. The hardest choice is often the best. After watching the first story above. Do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. Next. Let's watch another similar story. An unusual event transpired in a picturesque area of Madison. As the evening buzzed by, Ryan Crosby, a young man, became entangled in a mathematical mystery. Ryan murmured to himself as he stared intently at the blank pages of his textbook. His brows furrowed and his spirit crushed by the seemingly impossible math problem. The solution eludes me. He whispered, his eight-year-old mind struggling to comprehend the intricacies of his upcoming task. The nebulous, detailed solutions stayed enticingly out of grasp despite my best attempts in extensive web searches. When all other options were exhausted, Ryan took a genuine but unusual approach. He picked up the receiver, dialed the numbers that were ingrained in his memory, 911. With a blend of fear and optimism. 911. What's your emergency? The other party's speech resounded with the measured precision of someone who had dealt with countless crises before. Amidst the usual cacophony of 911 calls, Ryan's sincere cry for help escaped his lips in a torrent of words. 
I need help with my maths. He admitted, his voice betraying a mix of urgency and resolve. The dispatcher was attentive but perplexed as he asked for elaboration. His voice slightly skeptical. Mathematics, he repeated. Briefly taken aback by the unusual suggestion. Unfazed. Ryan continued on. His determination unwavering. He confirmed. Yes. Indeed. Relying on his mother's wise words of counsel. I was told that 911 offers aid in times of need. And my need is great indeed. The dispatcher, who was used to handling far worse situations, was struck by the innocence and genuineness of the boy's voice. He finally gave in, his resignation hinting at a trace of empathy. Very well. Ryan, he admitted, his voice becoming more kind. Keep in mind that this line is mostly for when there is an emergency. Still, I'll do my best to lend you a hand with your arithmetic problems. An unlikely friendship was formed that evening. In the stillness. Between the faraway hum of sirens and the soft rustle of pages, a brief encounter between a boy eager to learn and a dispatcher offering an unexpected helping hand. The operator was caught between skepticism and empathy as Ryan's tears streamed down his face. She was hesitant to ask further questions. But she knew that the one person who could explain everything would be able to reassure her. Could you kindly hand over the phone to your mother before I transfer your call? The operator softly interposed. Still, Ryan couldn't stop crying over his mother's departure, his pain was obvious. Without her presence, I would not have called 911, he exclaimed, his voice quivering with anguish. Anxieties of the operator grew. Are you accompanied by anyone else? she said. Her tone gentle but thorough, confessing. No. It's just me. Ryan exposed his weakness in the subsequent pause. The operator acted quickly upon realizing the seriousness of the issue. Maintaining Ryan's connection while she summoned help. Law enforcement personnel were quickly sent to Ryan's location in a whirlwind of conversation and keystrokes. They arrived to find a lone figure, a little boy, alone in his house, struggling with anxiety and doubt. Ryan responded solemnly to their questions as he described his life on his own after getting back from school. Concerned about his mother's whereabouts and the number of unreturned calls to her phone, the police officers moved swiftly. Their attention laser focused on the pressing matter at hand. They searched diligently throughout the night following the feeble signal that indicated Matilda's last known whereabouts. A lonely abandoned car stood still in the middle of the night, which they eventually located after much searching. With their hearts racing with excitement, they cautiously approached and glanced inside. In the midst of the quiet, Matilda lay, lifeless but alert, a ray of light shining through the darkness. The officers quickly coordinated the call for help and their combined efforts ensured that Matilda was safely transported to the closest hospital. Their inquiries lingered in the air as she awoke, mixed with a mix of relief and eagerness for answers. Mrs. Crosby. Can you hear me? In the middle of the mayhem, the officer's soft murmur provided a calming presence. Please, tell us what happened. It turned out that that fateful morning Matilda had set out on a voyage to see her sister in the neighboring town. I chose to do some shopping while I was on the way. She explained. Her voice betraying a blend of relief and confusion. In an attempt to expedite my journey. I took a shortcut. But then Matilda passed out while driving. And everything changed in an instant. Her memory was clouded with ambiguity as she acknowledged. I have no recollection of what ensued. Matilda had fainted due to heat exhaustion, according to the subsequent medical assessment, because her phone's battery had died. She was unable to communicate with anyone outside her car and spent the day asleep. The officer's account clarified the chain of events that culminated in Matilda's miraculous rescue, declaring with great gravity, It seems that a single call from Ryan to 911 proved to be your lifeline. 
he disclosed. Later, as an officer escorted Matilda home, her cherished son showed her an overwhelming display of emotion. As Ryan embraced his mother tightly, his emotions brimming with love and relief, tears trickling down his cheeks, he yelled out, Mommy, I missed you so much, his cries conveying the intensity of his pain. Matilda felt an overwhelming sense of relief and appreciation at that very moment. She had protected herself unknowingly by teaching her son to ask for help when he needed it. Hugging her son tightly, Matilda muttered, You saved my life. My dear. Her voice quivered with passion. The tragedy hit close to home for Matilda's loved ones, who saw it as a chance to teach their own children a lesson, to ask for help when you need it no matter how fearful or uncertain you may feel. After watching the stories above, do you have any thoughts? Feel free to share your opinions in the comments section. If you enjoyed our video, please like, subscribe, and share our channel. That all about today's stories. See you next time.